All right, what is going on everybody? So today I wanted to go ahead and do this tutorial I've been promising for a while just about my process of going over it and just in general how I do it. Now this is by no means a rendering tutorial or anything like that. It's not going to be going super in depth on like how to make, you know, stunning illustrations. This is just kind of a quick and dirty how to get some concept art done specifically for weapons. Say you're making like a mod for Skyrim or Morrowind or anything like that. Um, this is just a good way for you to get some ideas down um, and sort of figure out the process and the direction that you want to go in. Today specifically we're going to be making um, some concept art surrounding the uh, dwarven weapons from the Elder Scrolls. Um, I just thought that that would be kind of fun. There's a lot of intricate um, and interesting uh, shapes and patterns that they have and uh, there's some really cool shape language that you can mess around with and I thought that that might be exciting to explore a little bit today. We're going to be talking about culture sheets and shape language, how to properly, properly use references, uh, silhouettes, cohesion, um, and just stuff like that in general. Um, I'm also going to be throwing out um, some of the different art tools, some different options that can be used uh, whenever you are, you know, collecting references or, you know, what programs you can use to draw, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So starting off here specifically, um, you see, whenever I'm beginning a new weapon, I immediately just start with the symmetry tool. I'm using Photoshop here. A lot of other programs have these same tools to allow you to do symmetry. Some do like radial symmetry and vertical and horizontal. All of them are really good just depending on what you're doing. Um, the horizontal one's really good for doing like axe heads and stuff like that if you want the top and bottom of the axe head to be symmetrical. And in general, just using the symmetry to get a uh, baseline down, um, sort of just, you know, the bare bones of it is usually a pretty good thing. And you can see throughout this drawing process, I go back and forth a lot. I'm literally just throwing out everything I can think of. Like we're adding in big horns and stuff to the weapons and um, interesting stuff like that. And even though it doesn't really follow the same shape language and the same sort of artistic cohesion that um, I'm going for with the dwarven weapons. It's just something interesting to try out, see if it really works. And you can see that I stick with it a little bit with these um, sort of smaller horns on the hilt here. They end up going away later, but you know, it's always just a matter of, you know, trying out new things and, you know, figuring out, you know, what works and what doesn't. Most importantly right now what I'm doing is starting out with grayscale and you can see in the beginning where I was just throwing out some very basic rudimentary shapes just trying to get the whole piece to fit together um, you know starting with the blade and the hilt you know diff trying out different shapes in the blades even if they don't make a lot of sense for real life it can still be pretty fun and interesting just to try and you know figure out what else there is out there because you don't want to you know you don't want to stick yourself in too much of a box even if you are trying to follow um, something that already exists. So in this case, it being the dwarven weapons, a lot of them tend to have very straight, like dead on blades. And those are the ones I end up sticking with in the end. But I do try out some more curved stuff. And, uh, you know, it's just a lot of what concept art is, is just throwing stuff at the wall and, you know, seeing what sticks. Also with starting in grayscale, you get a really good opportunity to try and figure out the silhouette of the weapon because a good piece of art in general um, always has a strong silhouette. And what the silhouette is, is if it was just one big black image um, and you were just looking at the general shape of it, is that interesting to look at? Now, if I were just, you know, give you a rectangle of a weapon, that wouldn't be very interesting. But, you know, we have you know, we have cutouts for the hilt and in the blade to sort of make it more curved. Um, you know, we have those horns jutting out, which, you know, adds a lot to the silhouette and makes it a little bit more interesting to look at, a little bit more identifiable. If this was a weapon in game, you would, you know, whenever you're searching around and looking throughout the world, you see those horns on the weapon and you're like, oh, I immediately recognize, you know, what that is. Those are all really big parts of the silhouette and the shape language that we're trying to construct here. 
I am um, creating this concept art in Photoshop specifically because that's just tends to be what I use. However, there are a lot of other um, tools that you can use that I, I've tried a bunch of them. I think that they're perfectly fine. Specifically, the tool that I use for references is called PureRef. It's a free program. Basically, all it is is just this overlay, this sort of like workstation that sits um, on your desktop. It's this little overlay that goes over any window, no matter what it is. You can just copy and paste images that you find on the internet to it. You can save boards, you can add text. Um, stuff like that just to try and structure your references a little bit and so I find it really helpful um, just to be able to throw a bunch of references together without having to take them all into Photoshop and you know sandwich them around uh, you know whatever I'm drawing and it's just a big pain to do that and um, it's equally nice because I can literally copy those images from pure rough and bring them into Photoshop and paste them into Photoshop if, if I really need uh, to you know, get my references in Photoshop for any reason. Um, when it comes to the actual drawing, I'm using Photoshop, like I said, but uh, there are also other really good tools. Clip Studio Paint, you can buy that for just 50 bucks. Uh, 50 bucks is a lot, but in my opinion, Clip Studio Paint is really worth it. I really like it. I think it's really a really, really solid program. It's got some animation tools, it's got some 3D tools in it that you can use to like pose 3D models and then draw over them. So I think that's really cool. Um, there's also GIMP, which is totally free. I've used it a couple times. I used it for a long time back before I ever bought Photoshop and I, it works totally fine. It has a lot of the same capabilities that Photoshop does. So if you're on a budget and you want to just, you want to just draw for free. I even know some modders from Morrowind who use GIMP to make all their textures and stuff. It's a very powerful uh, piece of software. So highly recommend GIMP. Um, also there's, uh, Sketchbook Pro. I haven't gotten a chance to try it out myself yet, but everything about it screams to me that I would love it, and I do really want to try it. Um, it's really, really good if you just want to get in and draw and not have the extra bloat of, um, you know, all the different tools that, like, say, Photoshop has. Um, if you want to just get in and just focus on drawing, it's an amazing program just for that, and you can make some really cool stuff with it. And then last but not least, uh, this is for iPad only, but it's called Procreate. I'm sure everyone and their mothers heard of it at this point. It's only 13 bucks. Um, I use that a lot whenever I'm traveling or just, you know, moving around or don't really feel like setting up my drawing tablet. Procreate is one of my favorite. Um, you could download custom brushes for it, like you can with just about any one of these other softwares as well. I believe Sketchbook Pro has like brush packs you can buy and download but I'm not so sure if you can just like get any uh, brush pack off the internet. If you do know, please let me know in the comments below. That'd be really cool to, to know. Um, Sketchbook Pro is 20 bucks. Um, it's a one-time payment. So I believe that Photoshop is the only one that I know of personally that's a monthly payment, which, you know, thanks Adobe. But those are all really, really strong tools that I, that I highly recommend that you look into. Specifically the brush pack that I'm using and that I use for pretty much all of my concept art and illustration at this point is uh, another YouTuber's brush pack. It's uh, Mark Burnett's. It's really good. I'm going to link it below. Highly, highly recommend getting that brush pack. It's super solid. I use it for everything. I love it. Now back to the actual drawing. You can see here I started in grayscale. I'm going to, I end up adding a base layer of color um, later on once I kind of finish the actual drawing. The main reason you want to start in grayscale though is so you can see the value of what you're drawing because a lot can be lost if you start directly with color. A lot of those, you know, really dark darks and really light lights can be can become kind of money, can kind of not really make a lot of sense with the lighting of the scene if you don't start in great scale. Grayscale. And a lot of people um, work really well just starting with color and if that's you, that's awesome. But if not, then um, starting in grayscale and working your way up. I usually start with a lot of midtones. I don't really put in any really dark darks or really light lights until I'm to sort of like a semi refining phase where I'm starting to get a little bit more of those um, smaller details in. And a big part of it also is don't be afraid to add in tons of really teeny tiny details. Even if you don't know, you know how you're going to translate that to 3D if you're making a 3D model, it's good to try and just add in as many of those tiny details as you can, you know, really make it something interesting to look at um, and something that a player would think, wow, this is really cool. I'm going to use this weapon all the time now. Um, just because that is truly what makes an interesting weapon for a game or whatever. Um, and 
if you're not the 3d modeler who has to do it well that's his problem to deal with or her problem to deal with so you don't even have to worry about it but knowing a little bit about the 3d process really does help you create your concept art um, being a 3d artist um, myself with a 2d art background it makes it a lot easier for me whenever I'm creating concept art now that I know you know whenever I'm drawing something oh is this going to be um, texture or is this going to be something I actually model in or is this going to be something that's actually part of the topology or is this something that I'm going to leave to my normal map or you know whatever it may be keeping those things in mind while you're creating your artwork is really helpful to know you know where the limits are of your design another big thing that I wanted to mention is the power of thumbnails thumbnail sketches are so helpful I didn't really do a lot of thumbnailing here because I already had a design in my mind that I thought worked really well, but the very simple just, you know, getting down, you know, the base level detail, the big shape, stuff like that, that is really awesome for just figuring out what designs work and what designs don't. Because you, you know, with thumbnail sketches, you can get a little bit of detail in, you can get a lot of the big shapes in without having to stress so much about you know actually making it look like really solid it just gives you an idea of where you can take it thumbnail sketches are just little sketches with a little bit of detail and a lot of bit of shape just to figure out what works and what doesn't and what's really great about them is that you can then blow them up really big and then you know use the detail that you did put in as a guideline for creating something creating a full illustration if you think it's good enough but if you don't think it's good enough, you didn't just waste like two hours rendering this whole thing that you end up hating and it sucks and you don't want to use. So thumbnail sketches, super powerful. If you don't really know what you want to draw um, and you just have a couple ideas that you're floating around and you're just trying to figure it out. So highly recommend starting out with probably five, six um, thumbnail sketches of just basic swords, basic shapes, and then just going from there. One other thing I wanted to mention is really artistic cohesion. Um, this isn't really that, you know, that advanced of a concept. It's just the idea is just making sure that your designs are cohesive across designs, if that makes sense. So you can see the two swords that I, um, that I spent a lot of time rendering here, they're pretty cohesive. They have generally a lot of the same designs. They have same patterns in them. Uh, I included um, sort of that like worn beaten hammered metal texture in both of them um there's a lot of you know a lot of similarities between the two of them and i took a lot of those similarities from the dwarven weapons that i'm basing these designs also off of so whenever you're creating something for a game um creating a culture sheet just a general guideline of references to look at um, and it doesn't have to be just weapons you've seen my little reference board in pure ref show up a couple times now um, throughout this time left and you've probably noticed that it's not just weapons on there there's a lot more I have armor on there I have um, images of like dwarven jewelry and dwarven people and those are culture sheets figuring out you know who are these people that I'm creating this weapon for how would they create it why are they creating it this way you know and a big part of it, think about it this way. If you're creating something for a game, let's say, we're thinking about the dwarves here. Dwarves are excellent craftsmen. We know this about the dwarves and the Elder Scrolls, right? So obviously I'm not gonna make a super jagged and nasty looking weapon because they're experts, right? So they would make really, really high quality, really, really nice weapons, you know, super intricate, tiny, tiny details everywhere, right? That's the dwarven way. If I was making something for orcs though, it would be really nasty, it would be jagged, um, it wouldn't be great. Obviously, Elder Scrolls orcs are master smiths, but we're just, you know, let's just say this is Lord of the Rings dwarves we're or orcs we're talking about, right? You know, not great smiths.
So now we're moving into sort of the just throwing down some color phase. I don't really go fully into the process, but basically all I do is really just mess with the levels a little bit to make sure I have those really dark darks that I want and the really light lights that I want. Um, just to make sure I have solid contrast because metal is very contrasty, right? You know, metal's not, you know, a dozen washed out mid-tones. It's really dark, deep blacks highlighted with really light whites, right? And so you can see here um, at the very end, I have a couple different variants. I have the sort of dwarven colors on the right. And again, I didn't fully render these. I did a little bit of paint over added after I added in some of the base colors. But all I did was I took my grayscale weapons that I created, and then I did a little bit of a color balance on them, did a little bit of a level balance on them, and bada bing, bada boom, Bob's your uncle. I have a pretty decent looking concept art right here. And obviously you can go even further with this. I created a little bit of an iron version in the middle, and then on the left there, I blew, uh, I blew it up really big so you can see all the small little details that I added in in the hilts, because I think the hilt is a it's a really big focal point of any sword that you're creating, right? Because swords oftentimes have really, really intricate little hilts. Um, and that's where a lot of the detail tends to be. But regardless of that fact, um, I just wanted to show you guys quickly, you know, my process for creating concept art, um, specifically for weapons and sort of, you know, how I go about it, you know, what I'm thinking while I'm creating something like this. So... I want to thank you guys for watching. I know this was a bit of a short video, a bit out of my style. You know, the voiceover isn't typically what I normally do, but um, I wanted to give something new a shot. I am working on some more tutorials, some more videos, and I'm thinking pretty soon, hopefully, I will have a armor tutorial for Skyrim. So go ahead, definitely stay on the lookout for that. My next video, I really would like it to be the armor one, but it might be the one after. But it is coming. Everyone's been asking for it. I will make an armor tutorial for Skyrim, um, pinky promise. Um, but anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you guys make any concept art, please send it to me. I'd love to see it. I've also been considering um, making a Discord. I posted a community post about it because um, I had a few people ask me if I would make a Discord. Um, I would love to do that. I want to start a new series uh, where you guys send me your unfinished mods and, you know, any troubles that you're having or just you want me to fix it or, you know, make it look better or give you some tips on it. And I'll, you know, take your unfinished mods and I'll make them look nice, you know. And uh, that's something that I really want to, I really want to do in a Discord would be really awesome for that. So if a Discord and that series in particular sounds interesting to you, please leave a comment. Let me know because I would love to do it. I just want to make sure that it's something that you guys want as well. But as always, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate your time and I really hope you liked the video. Let me know what you guys want to see next. I'm probably going to be doing a community poll soon. And so stay on the lookout for that and any videos I have coming up. See you later.